Thanks for coming on to Worldwide Entertainment TV. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, no problem. So how are you handling the big storm today in Toronto? Uh, you know what? It's it's not really... Um, <clears throat> Well, I mean, it impacted. I had a at a, a gig at a school um, this morning, but it was canceled because they're not doing virtual. It was supposed to be um, pumped into the school, but they're they're just calling it a snow day or whatever. So we got to reschedule that. But uh, it's been a busy day. So I've just been on the computer talking. It's you know, it's Martin Luther King Day in the in the states and stuff. So uh, I just finished doing a presentation about that. So I mean, I just been by the computer. So I mean, I'm not even worried about what's happening outside. So. Could you tell us how you got started with the spoken word? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a, <laughs> an interesting story because, you know, I'm a, I'm a shy introvert. Um, yeah. So I never would have chosen to do something that would put me on stage in front of people. And when I was in high school, um, I was organizing a talent show for Black History Month. And I had all these friends who, you know, could rap, sing, dance. And I had all of them in the show. And then I got to the point closer to the event where I was like, you know, all these people are going to watch all my friends in the spotlight and, you know, I'm just going to be in the background. Nobody's going to really know that, you know, I put this all together. So I'm like, you know, yeah. if you have no talent, what can you do to get into a, a talent show? So I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe write a poem or something. So I wrote a poem just to be in the talent show and that poem changed my life. Um, you know, people love to hear stories, you know, and Stories are around us all the time. You know, you got some people call and they got the hottest gossip. I mean, that's that's storytelling, you know what I mean? So for us as spoken word artists, we just find, you know, creative ways to to tell the stories of what's going on in, in life and the things that we're experiencing. So I think people just really like that. And especially, you know, as we get more into, you know, technology and social media, just being able to talk is something that is becoming a, a rare art. Uh, because, you know, so many, so much stuff is done online and people write with abbreviations and all these kinds of things. So just being in a room um, where you can talk to someone and, and share something and someone is sharing back with you, it, um, I think people just really love that because that's, that's the basis of human interaction. What it was like when you got inducted into the Scarborough Walk of Fame? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was pretty crazy. And it was interesting because... When I, when I got the message that I was going to be inducted, it didn't even say like, it didn't sign anybody at the bottom. So I thought I was just getting punked by somebody. I didn't know if it was like a real thing or not. And then months later, I started to get information about the date and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this is a real thing that's happening. And it was such an overwhelming day um, to realize that, you know, I've done this work and there are people who see so much value in the work that I've done star in a shopping mall that has my name on it. And people can walk by and, and wonder who was this guy? What did he do? What were his contributions? My, right. my, I've seen my daughter there with her friends and, and bringing her friends to, you know, to see the star. So when you talk about, you know, legacy and, you know, being able to live on after you've passed away physically, I think, that star really represents that for me. Something yeah. different. I mean, spoken word is a, is a style of poetry and spoken word is poetry really that is written to be spoken. So, you know, a lot of times people write poems and it's just, you know, for their diary or just to be read. But as a spoken word artist, we write with the intention that it's going to be spoken and that changes and that affects how you write it because you have to write it now based on well, what are people going to hear? How do I want people to hear it? How do I want them to, to feel it, experience it? So you start thinking about, you know, how it sounds and you start playing around with rhythm and how you can, you know, use words to create melodies and, and these sorts of things. So it's just really a, a different style of poetry. Okay. So could you tell us about books that you've written? I've seen that you authored some books published. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I have um, my 14th book just came out this past December it was called All That Remains. And um, that one was dedicated to the year 2020 and all of the things that we saw happening from being in this pandemic to George Floyd to 
people being, you know, stuck at home and all the other stuff that that kind of happened in 2020. Uh, prior to that, um, I had a book called No Apologies, which was about race. I had one called uh, Period and Lessons from My Daughter, which was about gender. I've written a couple of children's books. So, you know, for me, it's really just uh, I create so much work. And as I create it, I just try to get it out to, to people because there's there's no sense in creating work and it's just stuck on my computer. It's really about creating it and yeah. giving it uh, back to people and putting it out into the world. So when you're doing live performance and when you're writing your books, do you go through the same creative process or it's two different lanes? Um, I mean, it's, it's different because, you know, when I'm writing a, a book, it's really about what do I want people to take from this, this book and, and what pieces am I gonna put into it? Um, and then when I'm doing a live performance, I'm not necessarily performing, you know, just from this one book, I'm usually drawing from, you know, almost 30 years of my career, um, you know, certain pieces that I think are gonna really resonate with people. Um, so, you know, when, when I'm planning a performance, it's really about how do I make this as engaging as I can and as entertaining um, as I can for the audience. And when I'm creating a book, it's really about what do I want people to think about as they read through this? Okay. So I'm sure you get this a lot because there is parallels. Uh, what are your thoughts on hip hop artists? And do you feel that you guys are kind of close in the same kind of line of work? Yeah, I mean, I think spoken word artists and hip hop artists are, are cousins almost in a sense. Um, hip hop artists are confined to a beat. You know, they got to make sure that their their rhyme scheme and patterns fits within the, the beat of the music. Whereas spoken word, because a lot of spoken word doesn't have music, you have the freedom to create the, the beat and the melody that you want. Um, the greatest rappers are very poetic. If you look at their lyrics, it's, it's very, you know, poetic. Um, so there's definitely a lot of, of parallels between um, the two uh, modes of expression. Okay, right now we have a greatest of all time series that we started and we ask fans their opinions and guests that come on the podcast. Okay. Who do you feel is the greatest female rapper of all time? Right now the poll is between Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim. If not one of them, then who do you think it is? Well, I, given given my my age and where I come from, I I, I don't think it would be either of those two. My my vote would go to Lauren Hill, who I think is the the greatest female rapper lyricist. Um, she could even be on lists with men with the men. She doesn't have to be in the female category. Uh, very poetic, very poignant. Um, so for me, it would definitely be a nod to to Lauren Hill. Oh, no. All right. Did you ever consider going into rapping since you write lyrics anyway? No, because, you know, I think one of the, one of the things that's important is you have to know your limitations and you have to know, you got to know your lane. So I was never really able to, to write and like stick to the beat and I never had that flow and that cadence. So it, it just would sound not good. So to, to spare myself, you know, yeah. from that, uh, I was just like, let me just stay in, in my little lane over here. Let the rappers do what they got to do. And I'm over here, uh, you know, in the next lane over, just yeah. perfecting what, what I do uh, extremely well. So, um, you know, there's there's little things that I've done where, you know, it it's, it's kind of like, you know, rap where, you know, people have invited me to do a verse on, you know, different songs and stuff like that, but definitely would never call myself a rapper. I don't try to rap. I'm not even, I'm not even in that, that lane. Um, because again, I just know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And I try to focus on what I'm good at and stay over there. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. <laughs> I've seen that you've done some produ production work domestic violence that was called um, Three Knocks. And then I've done other like shorter videos um, of some of my, my poetry as well. And it's just really a way to find new audiences, to find new ways to, to get the work out there. Um, you know, doing the short films has allowed me to be in, um, you know, 
film festivals in different places and that sort of thing. So for me, it's always a matter of looking for new audiences and asking myself, well, how else can this work be represented? And I think when you do anything for, you know, this year is 29 years, um, you know, for my career. And when you do anything for that long, you kind of have to always be looking at how do I reinvent myself and how do I show people something new and show that I'm still growing and I'm still, you know, trying to do some different things. So I think film is one of the ways that I've been able to do that. Okay. So what other productions that you feel that you might get into into the close future? Um, let's see, there's, um, there's a piece that I'm hoping to um, film later this year. I did a, I guess a poetry, it's a poetry, sexy Christmas carol. So I definitely wanna film uh, a video for that later um, this year. Um, I'm working with this uh, young man, he's 14 years old, plays the violin and, and uh, does, um, composes. So he reached out to me, wanted to know if he could like compose to one of my poems. So I'm just waiting now for him to finish the composition and then film a video um, of that and try and get that out there. So um, there's always stuff happening. Like I just, I just create and I just try to work and I try to collaborate with people um, all the time. I'm right now working on um, two EPs with some uh, producers, just trying to get that stuff done and out this year. So, you know, people are always hitting me up looking for, for different things. And I, I just try to create uh, every day because I think, you know, collaboration is so important because yeah. it, um, you know, it just allows you to stretch what you think you can do. And, and different people come with different energies and different ideas. And, and you just get to really appreciate, you know, your gifts and other people's gifts and see what you can create when you, when you work together. So um, I'm always just collaborating with people and, and new stuff is just popping up. Even if I didn't have it planned, it's just organically uh, being created. Okay. So I seen that you also recently got into politics. How did that come about? Man, that, that was a crazy one. So, uh, you know, four years ago, um, I was just chilling and I got a phone call and they're just like, hey, you think you would ever run for politics? And I was like, absolutely not. That's not my lane. That's not what I do. And these people were persistent. And they're like, look, you do all this work in the community. What if you got elected? Can you imagine how much more you know, you'd be able to do and how many more people you'd be able to help? And they just kept getting different people to call me and try to convince me. And eventually I was like, you know what? Let me just jump in and, and see what happens. So, you know, me as a poet, jumping into politics where, you know, I have no experience or whatever. It was definitely an interesting learning experience, but one that I encourage so many people to get involved with, to yeah. really understand how it works, how decisions are made, uh, the power of relationships, and the beauty of it, even though I didn't win, is that you end up meeting so many people who know that you are even in the race and now it's like, these people are a phone call away. So now yeah. if I need something, I know people who did win, who are elected and I can be like, hey, and I can call them and see if I can get certain things done or if I can get favors or whatever the case may be. So it is absolutely okay. awesome for networking and that sort of thing. And I encourage so many people to actually, you know what, just jump in it. And even if you don't win, like I always tell people, don't get caught up on if you win or if you lose, get yeah. caught up on what can I gain from doing this? And if you're focused on what you can gain from doing it, you can't lose. You, there's only wins. So even though I didn't win, I still won. And I still have all of these contacts that I can now call on and be like, hey, I'm trying to do this thing. Can you help you know, push something forward or get it in front of the right people or whatever? Because a lot of times people pay more attention when it comes from a politician or whatever. So having these people as you know, your colleagues or acquaintances goes a long way. Okay. So I also saw that you were, you've been on the same stage with the likes of Alicia Keys, and you performed for Barack Obama and also the Governor General of Canada. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how that interaction was and experience? Uh, I mean, the most recent was uh, Barack Obama and that happened. I'm okay. so grateful because it was just like weeks before the pandemic. So, um, you know, he came to Toronto, he was doing a speaking engagement and they reached out and they asked me if I'd be down to like 
uh, do an opening performance for it. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> absolutely. So that was crazy. You know, it was like 10,000 people and, you know, just getting to meet him. And, I, you know, I have a picture of him and I together. Yeah, uh, cool. You know, so that was dope. And that's one of those ones where it's like, nobody can take that from you. You know what I mean? The picture's yeah. here. I have this, you know what I mean? So it's like, it was, it was a dope it's moment. Yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, you know what? Other things, people are always just reaching out to me to, you know, to speak at different things, to perform at different things. Um, years back, it was a, a World AIDS Day concert that Alicia Keys was coming to town for. And um, I ended up, um, yeah, being the last artist to perform before she yeah. came on stage. Uh, for that and it was and it was so weird because that that performance actually led me to to meeting Drake and and just doing so a whole bunch of stuff right so you know one thing always leads to to something else so it's I mean I, I try not to um, you know turn down opportunities that seem like you know something that is Happily, yeah. in, in line with who I am and and my values and stuff and you just go out there and you do it and almost everything turns into something else so I see the next event that you are lined up for uh, the Canadian Coalition is doing for mm. race. Yeah. Could you tell us when that event is and what it's all about? So the, um, yeah, the, the Canadian Coalition event uh, is coming up. They're doing a two-day event, January 20th and 21st. And they're going to be looking at deconstructing um, colonialism and how could we, we really look at um, dismantling systemic racism and moving to a more... Um, equitable uh, Canada. And um, I've done work with the, the coalition for probably two, three years now. Um, and they love my ability to speak about tough subjects in a way that people will get it and that people will respond to it. Because sometimes, you know, you start to talk about racism and, and people get defensive and, and it yeah. just becomes really difficult to actually have a meaningful conversation. But when you can package it in art, and you can do it in such a way that people are like, oh, you know what? I get that. I feel that. Um, it opens up the conversation a little bit more. So they've uh, invited me to come on board to um, present and to perform on both days so that um, we can use some of my work to, to move the conversations a bit further and to dismantle a bit of the defensiveness. Okay. So is there anything else that you want people to know about Dwayne Morgan? Um, I mean, really, man, I'm just, I'm just out here every day, just trying to be the best version of myself. I'm just trying to inspire as many people. I'm just, as I said to you before, I'm just trying to create and collaborate with people. So, um, you know what, every, every day for me is fun. If people are enjoying this vibe, just, you know, search for me on social media, YouTube, whatever the case may be. There's so much stuff out there. I'm not really one who likes, you know, talking about all the things that I do or whatever, like people can go and discover that. Uh, I just like staying busy creating. So I definitely appreciate uh, the invite and you having me on here um, and, and love the fact that we got to chop it up a little bit. Yeah, thanks for coming on. You know, always learn new things with different people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. My pleasure, brother. All right. So good All luck right. at the event. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thanks. Take care. Let us know your thoughts below and hit that notification bell after subscribing. Visit wwetvn.com.